Hello, good morning. It's Pastor Maria here at St. Paul Lutheran Church on U.S. Highway 40 in Altamont. Welcome to our time of worship this morning. Today is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Even as we transition from the season of Epiphany, the season of great light, to the season of Lent, the season of much more dreariness and serious nature as Jesus makes his journey to the cross. Today in the Lutheran Church, we celebrate Transfiguration Sunday, where Jesus' divinity and humanness is revealed to a select few of his disciples up on a mountaintop. We will hear that story later in our scripture readings. I'm going to make a few announcements and invitations for you this morning. Um, it was George Bernard Shaw that said, we don't stop playing because we grow old. We grow old because we stop playing. With that in mind, we are all getting older, but I want to stay young at heart. How about you? Here at St. Paul, we would love to have you join us next Friday evening at 6 p.m. Um, the Kensler family and my husband and I are hosting a family game night. So we invite you, your friends, your family, your neighbors, your coworkers to join us here in the parish hall at six. Uh, we're gonna be playing some board games, some card games. If you've got one at home you'd like to share, bring it along. If they are dusty, just dust them off and bring them. Um, it's an opportunity to get to know one another better, just to have some good old fashioned fun. And as uh, George Bernard Shaw says, we can stay a little young that way. That's next Friday, March 4th, 6 p.m. here at St. Paul. Also want to have you uh, reserve your calendars for Monday, March 14th. If you are eligible to be a blood donor here at St. Paul from 2 to 5 on Monday, March 14th, we are hosting a blood drive through the Blood um, Center Impact Life. And so you may schedule your appointment online, an appointment is necessary, at bloodcenter.org, or you may call locals Ron and Elsie Velker, 618-483-6081. If you have any questions about donation or your eligibility, please call Impact Life at 1-800-747-5401. Two invitations for you, one to have fun, one to save, help save a life. <clears throat> Want to give a shout out to our local fire department. Um, your spaghetti meal fundraiser benefit last night was phenomenal. Thank you so much. I trust that the community of Altamont and surrounding areas showed up to help um, support a local firefighter's family in need. So thank you so much, local firefighters. I wanna, uh, before we begin worship today, I'd like to invite you um, to bring a few things into your worship space if you like. Like, as you see, I have a candle lit. We usually light a can candle or candles at the beginning of worship as a sign of Christ's presence with us. I always like to have a bowl of water. Make the sign of the cross on my forehead in remembrance of baptism. We'll be celebrating Holy Communion today, and so if you would like to participate, I invite you to gather um, elements for communion. Uh, bread, cracker, even a piece of cereal is fine. Some sort of beverage, wine, grape juice, apple juice, orange juice, even water is fine. One for each person in your family that will be participating. Um, here at St. Paul, we believe that all are welcome to the Lord's table, regardless of denominational background or instruction, because it is the Holy Spirit who um, invites us to the table to receive. If you prefer to receive a blessing at that time, I will also be offering a blessing. If you have questions about Holy Communion or the life um, ministry here at St. Paul, I would love to have a conversation with you. Please feel free to call the church office here in Altamont at 618-483-5249. I would love to know 
that you have joined us today for worship. You are welcome to drop a note in the comment section or um, a private message through Facebook or um, reach out to me and let me know that you have been worshiping with us. We consider you a part of our community, even if we do not know that you are worshiping with us. We'll be reading from the Holy Scriptures today. Um, if you want to have a Bible handy to follow along, please do so. We're going to be reading from Exodus chapter 24, Psalm 99, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, and the Gospel of Luke chapter 9. A lot of scripture readings for us this morning. Today is also the last time that um, I will I will speak the gospel acclamation today because it has some hallelujahs in it. And as we transition from the season of Epiphany uh, to Lent, it is tradition here um, in a lot of Christian churches that we no longer will speak the words of hallelujah during rent, Lent as a sign of repentance. With that in mind, I also want to invite you Wednesday evening here at St. Paul at 7 p.m. We will have Ash Wednesday worship service with the imposition of ashes and Holy Communion. Again, that's 7 p.m. this Wednesday as we begin our Lenten journeys together. It's hard to get away from the news these days. And uh, so we acknowledge um, that a big part of our world is in turmoil right now with the Russian and Ukraine conflict um, and the war that has begun. And so I would like to take a moment of silence today to offer a prayer given to us um, by Bishop John Roth, the Bishop of our Synod here in South Central Illinois. And we are going to light a special candle today um, to remember those lives that have already been lost and to pray for the people in, U in Ukraine. Let us pray. Gracious God and Lord Almighty and ever faithful, we join with Christians around the world in fervent prayer for the people of Ukraine. We pray for the end of military aggression, for the laying down of weapons and for peace. We pray for all those in Ukraine who struggle today and fear for tomorrow. We pray for national leaders including President Biden, that you give them wisdom, discernment, courage, and compassion to guide their decisions in addressing this aggression. Above all, we pray for all your precious children at risk, including those dear to us, that you, you would draw near to them and protect them. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship this day. We begin with confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who creates us, redeems us, and calls us by name. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. We confess that we have sinned against you and your beloved children. We have turned our faces away from your glory when it did not appear as we expected. We have rejected your word when it made us confront ourselves. We have failed to show hospitality to those you called us to welcome. Accept our repentance for the things we have done and the things we have left undone. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. 
forgive us and lead us that we may bathe in the glory of your son born among us and reflect your love for all creation. Amen. Rejoice in this good news. In Christ Jesus, your sins are forgiven. You are descendants of the Most High, adopted into the household of Christ and inheritors of eternal life. Live as freed and forgiven children of God. Amen. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Holy God, mighty and immortal, you are beyond our knowing, yet we see your glory in the face of Jesus Christ. Transform us into the likeness of your Son, who renewed our humanity so that we may share in his divinity. Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. First reading is from Exodus chapter 24, beginning with verse 29. Moses came down from Mount Sinai. As he came down from the mountain with two tablets of the covenant in his hand, Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone because he had been talking to God. When Aaron and all the Israelites saw Moses, the skin of his face was shining and they were afraid to come near him. But Moses called to them and Aaron and all the leaders of the congregation returned to him and Moses spoke to them. Afterward, the Israelites came near and he gave them in commandment all that the Lord had spoken with him on Mount Sinai. When Moses had finished speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. But whenever Moses went in before the Lord to speak with the Lord, he would take the veil off until he came out. And when he came out and told the Israelites what he had been commanded, the Israelites would see the face of Moses, that the skin of his face was shining. And Moses would put the veil on his face again until he went in to speak with the Lord. Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 99. The Lord is king. Let the people tremble. The Lord is enthroned upon the cherubim. Let the earth shake. The Lord great in Zion is high above all peoples. Let them confess God's name which is great and awesome. God is the Holy One. O mighty King, lover of justice, you have established equity. You have executed justice and righteousness in Jacob. Proclaim the greatness of the Lord and fall down before God's footstool. God is the Holy One. Moses and Aaron among your priests and Samuel among those who call upon your name. O oh Lord, they call upon you and you answered them. You spoke to them out of the pillar of a cloud. They kept their testimonies and the decree that you gave them. O oh Lord, our God, you answered them indeed. You were a God who forgave them, yet punished them for their evil deeds. Proclaim the greatness of the Lord and worship upon God's holy hill for the Lord our God is the Holy One. Reading from 2 Corinthians, beginning with chapter 3, the 12th verse. Since then, we have such a hope we act with great boldness not like Moses who put a veil over his face to keep the people of Israel from gazing at the end of the glory that was being set aside, but their minds were hardened. Indeed, this very day when they hear the reading of the old covenant, the same veil is still there since only in Christ is it set aside. 
Indeed, to this very day, whenever Moses is read, a veil lies over their minds. But when one turns to the Lord, the veil is removed. And all of us, with unveiled faces, seeing the glory of the Lord as though reflected in a mirror, are being transformed into the same image from one decree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, the Spirit. Therefore, since it is by God's mercy that we are engaged in this ministry, we do not lose heart. We have renounced the shameful things that one hides. We refuse to practice cunning or to satisfy, falsify God's word. But by the open statement of the truth, we commend ourselves to the conscience of everyone in the sight of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now about eight days after these sayings, Jesus took with him Peter and John and James and went up on the mountain to pray. And when he was praying, the appearance of his face changed and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly they saw two men, Moses and Elijah, talking with Jesus. They appeared in glory and were speaking of his departure when he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now Peter and his companions were weighed down with sleep. But since they had stayed awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. Just as they were leaving him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah, not knowing what he said. While Peter was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were terrified, and they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my son, my chosen. Listen to him. When the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. And they kept silent in those days, told no one of any of the things that they had seen. On the next day, when they had come down from the mountain, a great crowd met him. Just then a man from the crowd shouted, Teacher, I beg you to look at my son. He is my only child. Suddenly, a spirit seized him, and all at once he shrieks. It convulses him until he foams at the mouth. It mauls him and will scarcely leave him. I begged your disciples to cast it out, but they could not. And Jesus answered, You faithless and perverse generation, how much longer must I be with you and bear with you? Bring your son here. While he was coming, the demon dashed him to the ground in convulsions. But Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit, healed the boy, and gave him back to his father. And all were astounded at the greatness of God. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Wow. We hear this story every year, but Luke's version of the story has this healing that takes place at the end when they come down the mountain. I want to talk a little bit about what happens before they went up to the mountain to pray, where Jesus goes with just a select few of his disciples. Before this story that takes place on this mountain, known as the Mount of Transfiguration, if you're visiting Jerusalem, Jesus had been praying alone before this time. 
And a few disciples came around and he said to them, who do the crowd say that I am? Who do you say that I am? See, Jesus and his disciples had been healing. Jesus had given the disciples authority to heal people. They had been feeding the multitudes and the crowds had flocked to Jesus. All of this was happening and Jesus asks his disciples, those that he called to follow him, who do the crowd say that I am? Who do you say that I am? Jesus is really wrestling here because he knows who he is. Yet a part of him still ponders if the disciples and the crowns around him have a clue about what's going on and what is about to happen. So before this encounter on the mountain, Jesus very plainly tells his disciples that he is going to suffer that he is going to be handed over to the authorities, that he is going to die. And that if they choose to follow him, they will need to take up their crosses and die to their selves daily. Jesus is telling them pain is on the horizon. Horrific things are going to happen. But to have no fear. And so do the disciples get it? Not really. Even when Jesus is point blankly asking them, who do you say I am? And he's trying to get them to see who he is and to prepare them for his impending death and resurrection. They don't get it. So Jesus takes three. And they go up a mountain, Peter, John, and James. And there on that mountain, something amazing happens. I don't think we name amazing things in our lives as mountaintop experiences for no reason at all. It's stories like this where God is revealing God's self to us. It's mountaintop experiences in our life that infiltrate our hearts and our minds and sit with us in a special way. Here on the mountaintop, Jesus is revealed not only as their human friend who has been performing miracles, but the very divinity of Jesus is revealed in bright, white, dazzling, shining clothes and face. And Peter, James, and John freeze in fear. And then this cloud comes and engulfs them. They see two who have gone before them, two who have paved the way, two who have done miraculous things. Moses, the giver of the law. Moses, the one who led the chosen Israelites from slavery to freedom through the Red Sea. And Elijah, the one who was raised up into heaven without suffering death. These disciples see them both there with Jesus. Cloud engulfs them and a voice is heard. It's the same voice that was heard at Jesus' baptism. At his baptism, this voice was spoken for everyone else, but today on the mountaintop, this day, the voice speaks, identifying who Jesus is, who this dazzling white, this brilliant shining is. This is my son, my chosen. Listen to him. Listen. To him. The voice of God speaks, telling the disciples, listen, everything that Jesus is trying to tell them, 
they're apparently not listening to. You've been there, right? Perhaps with children, grandchildren, a friend, a family member, a coworker, you are trying to tell them something, explain something to them, and it looks like they're listening. It looks like they're trying to understand, but they just don't get it. There's a difference between hearing and listening. And here God names Jesus as the chosen one, the one who would pave the way next, the one who would free all people from death, the one who would rescue them from the pain and torture of sin and guilt and shame, the one who would be resurrected from the dead, the one with whom we have new life. They're on the mountaintop. They hear this voice. Yet they still don't get it. They're going to prepare dwelling places for the three that are there. I bet Jesus was extremely frustrated. Yet he knew that they would witness his death, that they would become witnesses to the story of his resurrection, and that through him, all things would be revealed. So the next day, they come down from the mountain, and there is this great crowd, and there is a man who is in greatly need of healing for his child. Jesus has given authority to all of his disciples to perform the healings, yet they're not able to do this one. And here we hear Jesus' voice. And Jesus sounds angry. You faithless and perverse generation, how much longer must I be with you and bear with you? It's like he's saying, do I have to do everything for you? Can you not do anything on your own? Have you listened to anything I have said to you or taught you? Yet Jesus does, den does not deny the healing that is needed. There he rebukes the unclean spirit. The boy is healed and back with his father and everyone who witnesses this is astounded at the greatness of God. What type of mountaintop experience do we need? What do we need to see with our own eyes to believe in the saving power of Jesus Christ? At baptism, we light a candle and the words spoken are something like this. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good, good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. It is through you that people see the dazzling white Jesus. That people's hearts and minds are transformed. That people come to know who Jesus is. And what Jesus has done for the world. On this mountaintop that Jesus reveals what his mission in his life is. It's not just to go and heal people and to feed people and to teach them the ways of the Lord. It's suffering. It's death. It's Entering the depths of hell so that you don't have to. It's being raised from the dead, ascending into heaven, and sending the Holy Spirit an advocate to be with us. Jesus' mission on earth is for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sins, and for a new life in Christ. For the promise of eternal life. And God says, this is my son, my chosen. Listen to him. 
How are we listening to Jesus this day? Where do our ears need to be cleaned out and we focus more intentionally on listening instead of just hearing? What's your mission in this world? What's the mission of the church here at St. Paul? What voices get in the way? What clouds our vision for the life that is ahead? I believe that voices of self-doubt that say, I'm not enough. We're not enough. We don't have enough. Fear, fear of scarcity, our sin and our selfishness gets in the way of hearing God's voice and responding. Jesus is very clear about his mission. He has been trying to tell the disciples, I don't quite get it. And I don't know that they ever do until after they witness his resurrection. And even then, it's still hard to believe and fathom. It's hard for us, even though this story has been carried on for over 2,000 years. Jesus knows who he is, and he knows what his mission in life is. You are a beloved child of God. God is using you to do wonderful things in this world. Our mission statement here at St. Paul is very simple. One with Christ. Learning, teaching, caring, and growing. I would challenge us to consider as we enter the season of Lent, how are we one with Christ, church? How are we learning with Christ? How are we teaching with Christ? How are we caring with Christ? How are we growing with Christ? Christ. What do we need to learn? Where do we need to teach? How may we care better? Are we willing to grow? I view every Sunday kind of as a bit of a mountaintop experience where we come and we gather to be filled with the hope of God's love. We come to be fed, to hear the words of forgiveness. We come to be reassured that Jesus is with us every day. And then we are sent out into the world on mission for God to share that love with others. Come, we gather on the mountain to pray. We come down from the mountain to live. May our Lenten journeys put us in a place where Jesus is revealed to us in new ways, perhaps blinding us, opening our eyes, ears, and hearts to seeing new things. Stay alert. Jesus travels with us wherever we go. May he be the light that guides and directs you in the days ahead. Thanks be to God. Amen. Living together in trust and hope, let us profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance. So we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. Each prayer petition concludes with God of grace, to which I invite you to respond. Hear our prayer. Let us pray. Transform us by your greatness, O God. Send us down the mountain to share joy with all people. Make us agents of change, confident that your hope will vanquish despair and your goodness will conquer evil. God of grace, hear our prayer. The mountains and the valleys sing your praise. Dazzle us with your presence in every landscape. Bluffs built by ancient glaciers, canyons carved by flowing rivers, flat horizons with uninterrupted views and sands shaped by ocean tides. God of grace, hear our prayer. You love justice and establish equity. Strengthen leaders of local governments, community nonprofits and grassroots campaigns. Bless them with gifts of integrity, creativity, and sound conscience. Build up safe and joyful communities where all people may thrive. God of grace, hear our prayer. Lord, this world groans in turmoil and conflict. Cast your ceasing power upon the war between Russia and Ukraine. Protect those in harm's way. Let your peace prevail over land and people of all nations. God of grace, hear our prayer. Heal those who are in distress. Give patience to those waiting for answers. Grant hope to those who have reached the limits of medical provision. Give compassionate hearts to those who accompany loved ones through illness and uncertainty. God of grace, hear our prayer. Today we shout Alleluia from the mountaintop, and this week we enter the wilderness of Lent. Bless all who prepare and lead us in worship during this change of season. Pastors, deacons, musicians, and all who contribute to your worship life especially Mike, Patsy, Pastor Brad Fry, and Pastor Maria Bonine. God of grace, hear our prayer. Blessed are they who listen to Christ's voice in this life and now rest in him. Transfer us from glory into glory and give us your peace that we do not lose heart. God of grace, hear our prayer. Since we have such great hope in your promises, O oh God, we lift these and all our prayers to you in confidence and faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. now the time in our service where our tithes and offerings are brought forward. And so here at St. Paul, we have many ministries in which we could use assistance with. And so if you would like to make a tax deductible contribution to help support the ministry here at St. Paul and for the whole church of God or the whole people of God, we invite you to send your tax deductible donations to St. Paul ELCA at 2293 East US Highway 40, Altamont, Illinois, 62411. And thanksgiving for the gift of our lives, for the offerings that we share, 
and for the meal that we are about to receive, let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, sovereign of the universe. You offer us new beginnings and you guide us on our journey. Lead us to your table. Nourish us with this heavenly food and prepare us to carry your love to a hungry world. In the name of Christ, our light. Amen. We prepare our hearts and our minds for Holy Communion and a blessing. I invite you to gather your elements now. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed our duty and our joy to give thanks and praise at all times and in all places as we remember. In the night in which our Lord Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, he blessed it, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks. He gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. It's shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come to God's table. There is a place for you and enough for all. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. those desiring a blessing today, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you this day and forevermore. Amen. Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Let us pray. We give you thanks, gracious God, for we have feasted on the abundance of your house. Send us to bring good news and to proclaim your favor to all, strengthened with the richness of your grace in your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. God, who leads you in pathways of righteousness, who rejoices over you and who calls you by name, bless your going out and your coming in today and forever. Amen. Go with Christ into a weary world. Share the good news. Thanks be to God. And it's wonderful to worship with you. We invite you to join us Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. for Ash Wednesday service. We will receive the imposition of ashes and celebrate Holy Communion. That service begins in silence. I want to let you know that um, as of March 1st, the requirement for masking is lifted. 
And so we invite you to choose or not choose to wear a mask in our worship space. We are continuing to worship um, and being seated physically distance, um, but we respect whatever choice that you make for yourself and for your family. Take good care.